In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to dynamically change an AI from patrolling to chasing the player and then going back to a patrol, dependent on if the enemy can see you or not. So, in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to set up a patrol of an enemy and also how to set up uh, it chasing the player. So, in the enemy blueprint, have it so it's set up to do the patrol and then we can work from that. But there's also a few things that we need to do in the enemy blueprint and the third person character, for my instance, but whatever your player's uh, blueprint is called, uh, there's a few things that we need to set up before we can do um, proper AI sensing. So what we need to do, BP enemy, so whatever your enemy blueprint's called, add a component in. What we want to do, search AI, and then one of them should be AI perception. So if we add that in, we can then click that and start to add some senses into it. So if we press on the census config the plus there and then it'll add an array and then an index to the array and then we can start adding senses so the only one that I'm going to be showing is sight but you can start adding it in other ones so like hearing or touch or things like that but currently I'm going to be showing you how to do it when the enemy sees the player it starts to chase the player so go to AI sight and then on the drop downs drop all these down until you start to see this menu so there's a few things that you can change, but you can look into that yourself because uh, these default values are fine uh, for the purposes of this tutorial. But the main thing that you need to change is drop down detection by affiliation and tick all of these. So currently you can only set these tags. So being able to see if the player is an enemy for the enemy or if it's a friendly or a neutral, you can only change that in C++ code. So for blueprint, just tick all of these and we can start to limit it in code. So this has the site there if you have more than one site make sure to set a dominant site uh, sense so sorry if you have a if you have more than one sense make sure to set the dominant sense as what you want the primary thing uh, usually it should be site um so i'm going to set that as dominant sense as site it's not really necessary if you only have one but it's good practice to just set that anyway another thing we need to do so currently this ai perception doesn't know what to look at it doesn't uh look at the third person character and see it as something to see so what we need to do search ai again in the player blueprint and search stimuli source or ai and then look for stimuli source so this will then let us um let the ai perception look at this and it'll be a source for that so we then need to click that register a source for senses click the plus and set it as a source for sight so the and then tick auto register as source so this will now allow the air perception to see it so it'll look at this blueprint and see it as a source so once we've got that set up we can start to set up the code now so click on the AI perception in the enemy blueprint and then on target perception update so click the perception then click the green uh, box the second one on target perception updated so once we've got this we can then start to limit it to the um, third person character. So currently this is the only thing in this uh, project that has a stimuli source, so it should be fine. Um, but if you start to add more things, it's, it's best to just have this for future proof. So cast to BP third person character, because that's the name of our uh, character's blueprint. And then uh, if this is correct, drag off of this, and then uh, we're going to add a branch. So currently we don't have a boolean, so what we need to do, right click the stimulus on the perception updated, right click this, and it'll bring up loads of different variables, loads of different variables of what that, uh, what it's seeing. So the actor is a common one, so that's uh, uh, separated from the rest of it, but all this kind of thing, but the one we need is stimulus successfully sensed. So is the player visible? Can the air... air BP enemy see the player so if it can do something if it can't do something else but what we need to do we first need to set up the code for that so we're going to do if the enemy can see the player so what we're going to do we're going to put in a custom event so you could use a tick but it gets a bit weird and, and you have to start doing some uh, special things so if we put in a custom event we can control when this gets fired so if we right click so i'll do that again right click search custom and it should be the one that's automatically selected but make sure it's called add custom event 
So once we have this, we can name this. So I'm going to call it chase player. So when the player can be sensed, chase the player. And then what we want to do, AI move to. So pretty similar to on the previous video when I got it to chase the player. So AI move to on the pawn, set it to self. Target actor, we can just do get player character. So you might want to set up a variable if you've got multiple characters in your game, especially if it's multiplayer or something like that, or you have NPCs that you want the enemy to be able to chase as well. Um, but for single player games where you're the only player character and the enemies will only chase you, get, getting player character is completely fine and it'll do the uh, thing that you want. So chase player, so get the current BP enemy, so self, to move to the player character when it can be seen. So what we want to do there is drag off of unsuccessful and then the delay of 0 0.2 should be fine and then what we want to do drag that on there double click on the little noodle and you're able to do a reroute so we can see it properly. So what we're going to do because this chase play will only fire once so it's not like a tick it won't do it every frame. So fire off this AI move to go to the character when they've got to the character, so when they've reached the player, do a delay and fire that again, just in case um, you've they've, they've got to the player and the player's moved a little bit away, it won't then uh, move further to that player. So unsuccessful, we need to get it to chase the player again. So what we can do, on the left, you can see chase player here. If we drag that in, we can then link this up and then this will fire and it'll fire this event. You can also right click and search it and it'll bring up the same thing. So what we're going to do, when the target can be seen, so the player, chase player. And then when it can't see the player, what I'm going to do is a last known location. So a lot of stealth games do this where an enemy will go to the last, lo uh, last known location of the player and then if they can't see them for a second or two, go back to their patrol. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to set up another uh, custom event called go to last known. So go to last known location. I might as well link that up now. So once we've got that, it'll fire this, then fire that, go to last known. So what we then need to do, we need to put in a variable. So last known lock. So last known location, but I'm putting lock for short. Change that to a vector variable. So make sure to add the variable last known location or lock for short, and then put the vector in. So we want to set this. So as soon as the enemy can't see the player anymore, what was their last known location? So we're setting this location now. So what we can do, get the player character, get the actor location. So get actor location and then link that up. So we're getting a reference to the character, what that location was, and then we're, we're setting that as the last known location for the enemy to move to. What we then need to do, is add another AI movement. So AI move to, put the pawn as self, put the location as the last known location. And then when we get there, we want on success. So once they've reached the last known location, if the player can't be seen, so if they go to the last known location and it can then see the player, it will then fire chase player. So then it'll go back to chasing the player. So what we want, if on success, the enemy still can't see the player, we want to add a delay. So add a delay for how long you want the enemy to wait there for. So they'll go to last known location, wait there for a little bit, and then do something. So what we need to do, we need to get them to start the patrol again. So if we go, go back up to this patrol, so on event begin play, it starts to do this patrol around... Uh, three separate locations. This can be changed um, how you see fit for your game. But then, if we do custom event start patrol is what I'm going to name it. So we've got two events uh, firing into this patrol. So on the begin play, start the patrol because uh, in the game they won't be able to see the player right from the get go. 
Um, but then also, if we uh, start the patrol, so fire this custom event, it'll also go back to the patrol as well. So what we then need to do, start patrol and link that up. So what this is going to do, so chase player, if it can see the player, chase the player. If it can't see the player, fire the last known location event, which will then set the last known location, move to that location. Once it's reached that location, if it can't see the player, because if it can, it'll fire this again. After one second, start its patrol again. So hopefully, all being well, this will now work. So play that. I'm going to catch up to the player or the enemy. Now starts to chase me. And then I'm going to go around this corner. So it should be around that corner. So it's going to stop there, then go back to patrolling. So it's now seen me because it's gone uh, around the corner and seen me. So it's chasing me again. So then if I go around here, it should start to... Oh, it's gone around the other way. So let's, let's get this shown. Um... So there we are. I hid in that corner, so I've hidden away now. So then that enemy didn't see me and it's gone back to its patrol. But then if I run up to it again, it'll start to chase me. So that's how you set it up dynamically in Blueprint um, to start to chase the player.